What's good YouTube? This is Al B back with another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up the FL key with FL Studio. Now I'm going to show you how to get it set up so that it's actually working and then I'm going to show you how to use the keyboard to navigate around FL Studio and how you can actually use it in your workflow. There are a lot of videos that show you all the nice features and functionality, but not many that show you how to get it set up and how to actually use those different features. I'm going to cover both of those today. I'm going to start with how to get it installed and get it working and integrated. And then I'm going to show you how to use the different modes and the different integrations with FL Studio so you get the best workflow out of the keyboard. Before we get into it, guys, you already know, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button so I can keep bringing you guys this dope content. All right. Without further ado, this is Al B. Let's get into it. Yes, sir. So you just first going to open up. Um, first thing you want to do is make sure you go download the latest version of FL Studio, right? You need version 20.9.2 at a minimum, right, to get this to work. And I'll show you why in a second. But download uh, the latest and run and install the latest version of FL Studio and make sure you're running at least, yeah, it's 20.9.2. Then you're gonna open up FL Studio. Boom, you're gonna go to options and MIDI settings, or you can just press F10. Now, heads up, mine is already set up, so just listen to what I'm telling you and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So. If you're running 20.9.2, you're going to be able to see a button, a new button here, update MIDI scripts. This was added in 20.9.2. Before I upgraded, I didn't have this button. So I had to upgrade to 20.9.2 and I got this button and boom, I update MIDI scripts. It gives you two messages checking for MIDI scripts. And then mine said there were no MIDI script updates. If you have just downloaded 20.9.2, you will see it say MIDI scripts have been updated or something to that effect. It'll basically tell you it downloaded new MIDI scripts. Okay, that's important because the new MIDI scripts are what is going to allow us to see the controller type that we need to see for this new keyboard, okay? So you had to download a new version of FL Studio, you had to update your MIDI scripts, and now your MIDI scripts will update your controller types, and you'll be able to see the new Novation FL key controller type in here, all right? Now, I'm going to go back through and actually step through my MIDI settings. OK, but I just wanted you to understand what you were doing and why you had to download the new version of FL Studio. Cool. Now we're in FL Studio MIDI settings. Let's step through them in the output section. You're going to hit FL key MIDI and you're going to set a port, right? Any port you want to set, just make sure nothing else is using that port. Then you go down to MIDI out to FL key MIDI, set a different port as well. Make sure nothing else is using that port. You can follow my examples if these ports are open. On MIDI out too, though, you need to make sure you send master sync. So you should see sync underneath this one or beside this one rather. So down here in the input section, you're going to hit FL key MIDI. You're going to make sure it's enabled. And then you're going to pick a controller type that's going to be in the top right. And you're going to do Novation FL key 37 MIDI user. Be very careful on this step, because if you don't do it right, this will cause you all types of confusion and frustration. You choose FL key MIDI and the controller type is Novation FL key MIDI. In my case, it's a 37 MIDI. If you're using a mini, it would be FL key mini MIDI. OK, the keyword is, the, is what it ends in. It ends in MIDI. In my case, it's FL key 37 MIDI. OK. Then I'm going to set a port here and this port for FL key MIDI needs to match the port I set for FL key MIDI up here in the output section. In my example, it's port two. So my input of FL key MIDI should also be set to port two. OK. Boom. Now we come down to MIDI into same thing with him. Enable him. Come to controller type. In my case, it's going to be the DAW. Right, so Novation FL Key 37 DAW. DAW is what we select for the MIDI N2 input. Novation FL Key 37 DAW user. Port is going to be three because in the output section 
for MIDI out to, I put port three. So MIDI in two needs to match MIDI out two. And so I set it to port three. Okay. So you can see the ports match. Sync is on on MIDI out two. Controller type is MIDI and DAW. And the Omni preview channel is set to 10. All right, so once you do that, um, you should be good to go. Oh, one other thing. Make sure you actually hit pickup slash takeover mode, and I'm gonna explain that to you in just a second. So I wanted to control the plugin pop mode really quickly, so hold shift and hit plugin under the pop mode section. When you do that, the keyboard is now in plugin mode, and you can also see it inside of the LED screen. It says pop mode plugin. Now, depending on what plugin you have, it's gonna control different things, but it always has to be an image line plugin. That's kind of the, the a, a con in my opinion is that it only works for image line plugins. But here I have Sakura pulled up and when I turn the first knob, that's going to be controlling the attack of the envelope. The second knob controls the decay. The third knob controls the sustain and the fourth knob controls the release. So basically your ASDR envelope. And depending on the plugin, those four knobs may not control the same thing. So you got to just keep playing with it and see what it changes. You can look in your top left at your hint bar and it'll tell you what you're changing if you just read it. So in this case, this is string one damp, okay? If I go to another plugin like Citrus, now I'm still in plugin mode, but I've switched plugins. So now my first knob controls my X axis of the modulation. My second knob controls the Y axis, right? And when I say knobs, they say pots, same thing. Pots and knobs, same thing. Um, but depending on what plugin you're in, it's going to control different things. So I suggest just playing around with it, looking in your hint bar and seeing what the knobs are controlling. And then you'll get a better understanding of which knobs for which plugins. One kind of negative about this set is that it only works for image line plugins, but still it's better than nothing. And you can go to custom mode and assign your pots to other plugins if you want to go that deep into it. You do have that option. So you go to shift and you're going to hit mixer volume for the pot mode. This is how you change what the pots are controlling. And it's kind of dope because if you hold shift, you can see um, what you're controlling. So if I turn this, it's going to be that volume. If I turn this one, it's going to be that volume. And remember, I turned on pickup or takeover mode in the MIDI settings. This is what it does. Let me show you for channel three. If I turn it, it's not going to change it just yet. And if you look in the top right, I'm sorry, if you look in the top left at the hint bar, when I turn it, it says volume is waiting for pickup. It's at negative 25 right now, but it's waiting till it gets to negative 1.7. Negative 1.7 is where I currently have it set. And so it's not going to actually change that value until I pass through negative 1.7. Watch as I continue passing, it's gonna go up to negative 16, negative 15, negative 1.7, all the way until I get to 1.7. Then it's gonna start controlling it, as you can see. So that's what pickup mode does. It means when you change a value with your knob, it won't just jump all the way to that position. It's gonna wait until you pass through. I'm doing it again with channel four. It's gonna wait until you pass through before it picks up and starts actually controlling it. And this is a good way to pretty much let the knob link up with where the software is. So it's a good way to let the software and the position of the knob catch up and you don't have any kind of weird accidents when you're trying to change things slightly, you know, or you don't mean for your volume to jump all the way at the bottom as soon as you turn it, right? So that's what takeover mode buys you. But that's how you jump around in your different modes. You're going to hold shift. And then when you look at the top, you have a pot mode and you can change it to whether the pots are controlling a plug in, whether they're controlling the mixer volume, whether they're controlling the mixer pan. So now I can use the same ones to control the pan and it has the same uh, pickup or takeover mode applied to all of your MIDI controls. It won't start controlling it until you pass through the current value. So I'm going to change the pan of channel two. And if I change it right now, it's not right because it's waiting for me to go past where it already is. Then it, then it'll start controlling it. Okay. Um, you can also change to channel volume, right? So when I go to channel volume, now my pots are controlling the volume of my channels. Um, and the same thing, it's pickup mode. Um, but you see channel one, I'm changing the volume on that. All right. 
if I go to, you can do channel pan, right? And then you have custom that you can put a custom pot mode that does whatever you program it to do, right? We don't have that set up today, so we're going to ignore that. Now, I do want to quickly show you guys more detail about this channel rack mode. If you hit shift and then hit channel rack, this is going to put your pads into the, what they call channel rack mode. And it allows you to use your drums like an NPC or another groove box or drum machine. Your bottom left pad will trigger channel one. Your second pad will trigger channel two, so forth and so on, right? This really helps out when you're trying to like record drum loops. So you can just hit record, hit play, and then you can Right, so you can really get a good bounce going, really nice workflow, in my opinion, one of the better features of the keyboard. If you are not familiar, I have made other templates that give you the same functionality from your pads for a number of different keyboards. Specifically, I have one for the Launch Key Mini MK3, and I have one for the Launch Key full size, you know, the 49 and the 61 key versions of their Launch Key MK3 by Innovation. So if you want to just get that pad functionality and don't have to upgrade your whole keyboard, then I'm going to put a link on screen in the description to where you can grab the MIDI template for the pads um, for those different keyboards, as well as some other more popular keyboards. Um, I do have templates that give you that same MPC style drum machine workflow for your pads, but uh, Novation took it much further with this. Um, they put that template for the pads, but they have other functionality with the knobs and the transport controls and scale mode that really make the keyboard all around really well integrated and really full featured. Uh, but yes, if you're looking for the same pad workflow for other keyboards or just for the other launch key MK3 versions, I will put a link on screen and in the description. Now, you also can, after you go to channel rack mode, the pad, the next pad mode is instrument. And that pretty much just makes the, um, that pretty much just makes the pads function like a keyboard. You can see it's kind of lit up like a keyboard, right? Um, so then shift to sequencer. And when you're in sequencer mode, uh, this is when you can kind of play in your, your step sequences. So if I hit, right now I'm on uh, channel one. So if I hit this, it's going to place that there. This is how you place that one there. So this is how you can do it here, right? So that's just your step sequencer for your drums. So with scale mode, uh, scale chord, basically you can use some of the preset chords or you can program your own chords in and be able to trigger them from one pad, right? Um, check out the manual for how to do that in the detail. But that's kind of it for your different pad modes and your different pot modes. So that's how you control what your pots are doing. That's how you control what your pads are doing and how you go between the two uh, different uh, modes and all the different functions. And when you get past your first eight channels with whatever you're doing, um, you just hit mixer over to go to the next set of channels in your mixer. So you'll be on the first eight, right? I'll be on the first eight now, but if I hit mixer over, you're on this next eight. And if you hold shift, that's when you see it highlight on the screen so you can know what you're controlling. So hold shift on the keyboard and then you can kind of jump around. It'll kind of help you keep up with what you're controlling. Uh, so if I go to mixer volume and then if I hit mixer over you can see me jumping across the different mixer tracks all right so you can control oh i guess all of them right so there's no limit you can just keep hopping over and control that set of eight now i'm on the first set of eight my pots control the first set of eight and yeah mixer pan same thing channel volume if i had more than eight channels then you would just um do channel rack right down if you have your pots in mixer mode, you can go back and forth without holding shift, but shift lets you see immediately. Moving along, you have um, you have quantize, which for me, when I've tried it out, the only thing I can get quantize to do is if I like play a melody and I have it highlighted here, then the quantize will actually quantize my melody. Metronome is obvious, right? It enables and disables the metronome. Undo and redo, pretty obvious. Play, stop, record, all do what they need to do. So then you have score log, which if you've never used it, basically it will dump a history of the last however many minutes of instrument playing and drum playing that you've done. It'll dump it all into MIDI. So like if you played something that was like a money take and you wanted it, you could go back and get it by pressing the score log. You would just open a new pattern and then press the score log button and it would drop it right on in there. Open the pattern, pattern three, hit score log. See, 
it just drops everything from the last i don't know how many minutes but it's a pretty long history so if you just played a good money take then you can use score log to come and highlight what you did and like you know manipulate it and copy it out and stuff um so score log is useful for that if you're just playing around until you you know what i'm saying you get a money take hit score log and you can go back and get it so that's kind of useful that's kind of it for the most part. I, I actually had issues with note repeat. I couldn't figure out how to get it to work. Like, I don't know why. Um, so that's something I haven't figured out yet. But uh, that's kind of it, guys. Just a, a quick start and a high level understanding of how to navigate around this keyboard and use the different parts of it. All right, guys. So out of a scale to one to 10, I give this one an eight and a half, an 8.5. I couldn't give it a 9 or a 10 for a couple of reasons. One, because you can only control the plugins that are native image line plugins, right? Ones that come with FL Studio. The other reason I couldn't give it a 9 or a 10 is because Novation has already released the Launch Key Mini and the Launch Key MK3 regular size that should have come with a lot of this functionality already. I know they're updating some of the scripts that allow you to get better functionality out of those controllers, but it's kind of unfortunate that you have to go buy another one to get full FL integration. One con that would be if you bought this keyboard, you wouldn't be able to use it as nicely with other DAWs at all. It would be like become like just a standard MIDI controller where mostly the keys would work and you probably would have to make some custom mappings to use it with another DAW. So that's kind of a negative as well. If you go between different DAWs, you're kind of stuck with only using this one with the FL Studio. So you kind of got to weigh your options there. If you're in the market for a new MIDI keyboard and you're primarily an FL user, this keyboard is definitely worth getting. If you already own a MIDI keyboard and you use other DAWs besides FL, I don't know that it would be worth it. So that's kind of a toss up there and a decision for you to make. Drop a comment below. Let me know what you think about this keyboard and what other content you would like to see. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Until next time, this is Al B and we are out. Yes, sir.